Hinduism has two gods. You have Ram who follows the rules and Krishna who breaks the rules. Ravan says my way or the highway. He keeps breaking the rules. He doesn't respect the weak. Ram tells in his dialogue, I have shot you with cunning because you have behaved like an animal when people start interpreting the Ramayana based on their own politics. Uh, Sita makes many choices. Not all choices work out. She also knows boys with toys misbehave. <laughs> What is it about the Ramayana and Ram in particular that makes it so special and so enduring amongst all Hindu scriptures? Ramayana um, is a story that was used to communicate the idea of Dharma, especially Raj Dharma across India. The common man knows words like Dharma and knows concepts like Karma uh, and Maya and Moksha, which are big philosophical Hindu ideas because of the Ramayana. We know it through stories. So that's a unique thing about uh, Hinduism that across India, in every corner of India, the stories were used to communicate complicated ideas. Concept that runs through the Ramayana is, or, or for many is Ram as Maryada Purushottam, uh, which has been built over the years with various attributes to it, valor, compassion, the way he treats fellow human beings like a boatman who helps him cross the Ganga, Shabri who bites fruits and only gives the ripe sweet ones to Ram, the notion of valor, fighting battles according to the rules of con uh, combat, the rare instance where he breaks it when, he, when Bali escaped from hiding, uh, but notions of duty that he goes into exile to keep his promise that he had made to his father, Dashrath, the sacrifices he makes going into exile. Do you believe all these values symbolize Ram even today? That's very simplistic, Rajdeep. That's like a parable being told, you know. You tell a parable to children and say, be good, be honest, be compassionate, be nice, be very prescriptive. So that's a very Western way of explaining things that, you know, Ram was this, therefore you should be this. Remember, that's the reason I said it is difficult. We always talk of karma. Why do we talk of karma? Ram is the eldest son of the royal family and therefore his conduct is very different from Krishna, who is the youngest son in a cowherd family. We are constantly being told that our actions are a function of our station in society, our privilege. What privileges do we get? And therefore, rules keep changing. It's not as simple that if you're compassionate, you're following dharma. If you are following the rules, you're following dharma. That's a very pedestrian understanding of this. So let me explain this again in detail. Um, you know, in... Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, in the Ramayana, you have got a the hero of the Ramayana, that is Maryada Purushottam follows the rule. Now, he is balanced in the Mahabharata with Krishna, who is Leela Purushottam uh, uh, Krishna, which is the one who bends the rules and breaks the rules. So, Hinduism has two gods. You have Ram, who follows the rules, and Krishna, who breaks the rules. So, question is, rule following and rule breaking does not make dharma. And that is what they are trying to explain, because this idea that if you follow the rules, you go to heaven. If you break the rules, you go to hell is a very Middle Eastern, Western idea. In India, they'll say, look at the context. Look at the context. Who is for, What are you talking about? Who is the mighty and who is the meek? So if you look at the story of the Ramayana, it's a very the villain of the narrative is someone who keeps breaking the rules and says my way or the highway, which is Ravan. Ravan says my way or the highway. He keeps breaking the rules. He doesn't respect the weak. Now, you told the story of Vali and Sugri, and everybody tells me about how Ram broke the rule. But rules apply in a place where everybody is respecting the law. Vali is a mighty monkey, extremely powerful monkey, and he treats his younger brother, who is weak, with contempt, which means he is the mighty who is overpowering the meek. When you are the mighty who is overpowering the meek, then you are not behaving in a dharmic way. You cannot then be uh, demand others to treat you in a dharmic way. You are behaving like an animal, the alpha who dominates the omega. And Ram tells in his dialogue, I have shot you with cunning because you have behaved like an animal. Therefore, you shall be treated like an animal. And that is dialogue very well written in the Valmiki is it's not about following the rules. It is about helping the weak. 
That's what dharma is about. Whether you follow the rules or you break the rules is not important. The question is, are you uplifting? It's the word in Sanskrit for uplifting is uddhar karna. Are, are you helping weak? Sugriv is weak in the Ramayana and Ram is helping the weak. In the Mahabharata, the Pandavas are the five brothers overpowered by hundred Kauravas. Krishna is helping the weak. So that is what we miss in the nuanced understanding of Mariyada Purushottam, Leela Purushottam. These are very refined ideas which come to us from the Dharma Shastras. There are those who will say there are very different interpretations, different visions of Ram. There's a way North India will look at it. There's the way South India, Dravidian India will look at it. Adivasi communities look at it. There's the notion of Siyavar Ram as Sita's husband. There's the warrior King Ram. Is there a common theme or are there different interpretations across India and the world about how we view Ram? I have been reading the Ramayana uh, for the last 25 years and there's a consistency across the Ramayana until we come to the 20th century when people start interpreting the Ramayana based on their own politics. So suddenly in the 19th and 20th century, you have a North Indian Ramayana and a South Indian Ramayana and a Dravidian Ramayana and an Aryan Ramayana and a tribal Ramayana. These are only seen in the 19th and 20th centuries. They're not seen in the earlier versions. In every Ramayana, including the Jain Ramayana and the this drama and Ram is presented as someone who is steadfast. The quality that is continuously presented with Ram is of steadfastness. And um, there are incidents in the Ramayana that trouble people, which are seen problematic. And it is always saying that, hey, Ram, you are so steadfast. Why did you do this? So the, nobody questions the nobility of Ram. They will question certain actions. Why did you do this? Why did you do this? And there's always this conversation. But what comes across with Ram is this principle of a steadfast man. What we call interpretations, North Indian interpretations, North is a 19th century phenomena, 20th century phenomena. Um, in the 16th century, when, for example, um, uh, Tulsi Das Goswami Ji wrote the Ram Charit Manas, he presented Ram as a form of the divine. Now, that was a 15th, 16th century bhakti movement where the divinity was presented through the idea of Ram and Krishna. That's only happening in the 15th and 16th century. But Ram remains the steadfast, steadfast son, steadfast king. Um, whether, as far as husband is concerned, he's always faithful to a single wife. If you go to the older works, that is the Sanskrit kavyas, the Sanskrit plays, where bhakti is not important, Ram remains the person who respects his father's decision. So we must be very careful. We should distinguish the 19th and 20th century writing, which is highly political, from more traditional writings which appear before the 19th century. Who exactly then is Ravan in all of this? Uh, is he to be taken literally or metaphorically as the villain? We spoke about Ram. How do we look at Ravan? Well, Ravan is a very important character in the Valmiki Ramayana. And uh, he, he, what is interesting is that he always dis it's very important for them to say that he is Brahmin. He is the son of Vishrava Rishi. He's highly educated. He knows the Vedas. He is a worship of Shiva. Um, he is uh, expert in mathematics. He's expert in astronomy. He's expert in engineering. He's expert in so many things. So they describe this highly educated man, but not a wise man. And I think the, it's a metaphor for educated people who are not wise. Rather than being generous and content, he seems to be obsessed with his own needs, his own desires, and we meet people like this, right, who are rich, powerful, educated. And rather than being generous because they are in a privileged position, and Ra Ravan is in a privileged position. He lives in the golden city of Lanka. He has kicked his brother out. Look what he has done. He's kicked his brothers out. He only demands loyalty from his brothers, and those who are not loyal to him are kicked out again. Vibhishan is kicked out. He's not a good king. He's obsessed with himself. And that's what Valmiki is trying to communicate with us. Educated people need not be wise. Powerful people need not be wise. How do you see that? How do you relate Sita to today's world? Sita is an extremely wise woman. She understands where her husband is coming from. She understands where Ravan is coming from. She understands the world is a cruel place and she refuses to be a victim. So if you look at the Ramayana very carefully, um, um, uh, Sita makes many choices. Not all choices work out. She chooses to feed Ravan and is abducted, but she never resents Ravan. She says, you are doing a wrong thing. You are 
educated man behaving like an idiot? Why are you doing this? Um, and when Hanuman says, come, let's escape together. And she says, no, let my husband come and rescue me because otherwise his reputation will be spoiled. She's not a victim. 21st century feminists paint her as a victim. But I think here is a wise woman who realizes the problem of kingship. She also knows boys with toys misbehave. And she is the wise woman who's seeing Ravan, the full of ego and Ram struggling with Dharma Sankat. And I think the generosity in her is the idea that we keep forgetting. I think calling, see, looking at Sita as a tragic victim is an unfortunate 21st century narrative. The stories of Hanuman, what do they tell us in a way? Hanuman is one of the most powerful characters in the Ramayana because when you, I always do, again in a workshop, you ask people, uh, Hanuman is helping Ram, helping people, helping Sita, helping, but what does he ask in return? Nothing. And he's just, he's observing how people are eager to take and are not interested in giving. And this is the conversation because later in later literature, Hanuman is equated with Shivji and the 11th avatar of Rudra. And the idea is that we are all, you know, I have heard people saying, Ye mera Hanuman hai, because he serves me. He does whatever I tell him to do. And I always ask them, Ki, Achha, aap Ram ho, kya uske liye? And then they have no answer. I said, are you a worthy leader? We all want great followers, but are we a worthy leader? And I think Hanuman represents that ability, someone who is very powerful, but who doesn't need the power to dominate, who doesn't need the power to be territorial like Ravan. He's the opposite. He's educated like Ravan. He doesn't need to show off. He doesn't need to kick his brother out of the kingdom. He doesn't destroy kingdoms. He is watching how educated people can be egotistical is one, and is observing how Ram struggles with Dharma Sankat and is observing how Sita never gets angry with people. She's never angry. She's just disappointed with people who do not seem to be uh, uh, generous and kind and content. And I think Hanuman is the witness, the powerful witness that is there in the Ramayana because he never asks for anything. He's happy with his in the Kadaliwana, in the banana plantain forest. He lives very happily. And with all the power, he could be a great king. He could be a great emperor. He could be, uh, you know, making softwares and, uh, you know, ruling the world with trillion dollar economies. But Hanuman is like, no. That's not the point of life. The point of life is to be discover the Atma, be kind, be content, be resilient, be generous. And I think that's what we learn from Hanuman. Devdat, if there is one big idea that you believe is therefore central to our understanding of the Ramayana today, what is that big idea? The animal inside you, that, that which wants you to dominate, that which wants you to be territorial, that is Adharma. And that is, do not, this whole idea of all powerful God is not a Hindu concept. Judgment Day is not a Hindu concept. Debate, rationality, not Hindu ideas. Hindu ideas is very simple. Are you submitting to your ego, which makes you dominating and territorial, or are you rising above it? And when you rise above it, you walk the path of Ram.